Look what's happening in Georgia after a knife-wielding LGBT leader was shot by cops with all of the confusion and animosity swirling around various protected groups, it's hard to know how to treat anyone. Many of those who consider themselves minorities think everything you say to them is a slight, even if you're not really of ethnic descent, that can apply if you just identify that way. If someone is a part of the LGBTQ community that's an automatic pass to martyr status, no matter how you're treated. Their struggle is always going to be more difficult than anyone else's. Of course, every one of us should be kind to one another, no matter their background or preference of any kind. Doing unto others the way you'd want them to do unto you is a really great life motto across the board. However, when someone is wielding a weapon and threatening to hurt you, or others all bets are off. If you're an officer of the law you've been taught what the proper protocol is to deal with a person like this. When it comes to weapons, there's pretty much just armed and unarmed, regardless of gender. Officers who responded to a call at Georgia Tech were faced with a distinct situation where the subject was armed, and they dealt with it accordingly. That was not good enough for the parents of the student though. The person in question was a Georgia Tech student and proudly non-binary which is a brand new gender for those who don't care to choose either of the original flavors. Bizpoc Review Parents of a gender non-binary Georgia Tech student are furious at campus police for shooting their child, who came at them with a knife shouting shoot me. L. Chris Stewart, the attorney for the family of Scout Schultz, 21 questioned why officers did not use non-lethal force on the president of the school's Pride Alliance. Stewart has a press conference planned for Monday where he intends to question if the officers had training to deal with mentally ill students, which is an interesting way to describe someone who identifies as gender non-binary. Loss of life is a tragic thing, always. It's understandable that the parents of this student would be traumatized and wanting answers, however, it's very telling that their attorney is looking approaching this from the standpoint of a mental illness. This kid was obviously disturbed, possibly in more than one way, and he, yes I picked a pronoun, if you don't like it, please refer all complaints to the First Amendment, lost his life because of it. Transgenderism or gender dysmorphia are still considered mental illnesses according to the official medical journals. These kinds of issues are much less rare now, but not less damaging. The young man in question was extremely troubled by something, and as you'll see in the video and transcript, he knew what he was doing. The shooting occurred on Saturday, after Georgia Tech campus police received a report of a person with a knife and a gun, CBS 46 reported. When police arrived they confronted Schultz, who was outside of a dorm holding a knife. Police approached and pleaded with the student to drop the knife. Come on, man, drop the knife, one officer said. Come on, let's drop it, another said. Schultz continued to advance toward the officers shouting shoot me. No, drop the knife, one of the officers said. Nobody wants to hurt you, another pleaded. But Schultz did not listen. The student paused and then took three steps towards the officers, forcing them to open fire. The Pride Alliance issued a statement following Schultz's death in which the group used the student's preferred pronouns of they and their. Dear Pride Alliance members, as you might have heard, last night we lost our president, Scout Schultz. We are all deeply saddened by what has occurred. They have been the driving force behind Pride Alliance for the past two years, the group said. They pushed us to do more events and a larger variety of events and we would not be the organization we are known as without their constant hard work and dedication. Their leadership allowed us to create change across campus and in the Atlanta community. Scout always reminded us to think critically about the intersection of identities and how a multitude of factors play into one's experience on Tech's campus and beyond. We love you Scout and we will continue to push for change. We contacted a lawyer that specializes in police shootings and all we can say right now is that we will make a statement tomorrow, Monday, Lynn Schultz, Scout's mother, told CBS 46. I mean, we're still gathering facts. 
We don't really know what happened, Scout's father, Bill Schultz said. Warning, graphic video this is what's known as suicide by cop. It's awful and horrible and the death of any human no matter how loved or unloved is a tragedy, but it wasn't the fault of anyone but the person himself, just like with any suicide. As much as his parents may want to say that this was hate-fueled in some way, this kid obviously had just as many opportunities as anyone to obey orders and he chose his fate. The only thing we have to sort out is if those who lobby for transgender rights are keeping those people from getting the treatment that they need. Share if you believe that the police did nothing wrong in defending themselves.